I've noticed they've changed the spelling of his name here. Now it's Uniel Dorticus. It used to be Unier Dorticus with an R rather than an L. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe they had his name spelt wrong the whole time. I don't know. Either way, I guess I'll be calling him Uniel instead of Unier from now on. So Uniel Dorticus wins a 12 round, was it unanimous or split? It was unanimous decision over Masternek in the World Boxing Super Series second season at Cruiserweight. And this is the first round. So Dorticus is now through to the uh, semi-finals. Now, Dorticus is a puncher, as we all know, and he's a very formidable guy in the early rounds. He starts fast. He starts with malevolent intent. And I don't think there's anyone at Cruiserweight or at least there's very few fighters at Cruiserweight who can hang with this guy in the, in the early rounds toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Because everyone who's been toe-to-toe -to -toe with Dorticus early in a fight has ended up flat on their back. And the guys who didn't end up flat on their back in fights with Dorticus were guys who stayed away from him, particularly early on. Even Gassiev, who is a very good puncher at Cruiserweight, even he pulled out a back foot game that most of us didn't even know he had in order to stay away from Dorticus in the early rounds, tire him out, and then eventually take him out very late on in that fight. So Dorticus is very formidable early on, not the typical Cuban, very aggressive, very heavy-handed. He's not the fastest guy you've ever seen. He doesn't have bad speed, but he's not someone you look at and think, wow, this guy's got really fast hands. Or No, no. He's got decent speed, but he's just heavy-handed and very aggressive. Puts all his weight into his shots. And because of this, because of the fact that he goes all out early in fights, he tends to gas by the halfway stage or even earlier. And that's what happened again here. It seems like Dorticus hasn't learned from the Bradis fight because he went right into this fight against Masternek with the very same game plan. Go out there, try to bomb the guy out in the, in the first few rounds. And if I don't get him out, oh well, there's no plan B. And there was no plan B for Dorticus. Dorticus has long arms. He's tall at 6'3". He's not interested in using his long arms. He's not interested in boxing. He's only interested in taking your head off. Now, that's great for the viewers like you and me. But for his manager, for whoever promotes him, for his family... They must be wishing and hoping that he would box a little more conservatively. I mean, I'm sure they don't want him to be uh, stinking the place out with terribly boring performances, but at least be a little more responsible, pace himself a little better. But yeah, Dorticus doesn't seem interested in that. <laughs> he came out in the early rounds as usual, tried to bomb Masternek out and... He did hurt Masternek on a number of occasions in the early rounds, and it wasn't looking good for Masternek, you know, at certain points when he was under heavy fire from Unia Dorticus. But ultimately, Masternek, with his experience, with his ring savvy, was able to ride out the storm and start putting some pretty decent boxing together. And I've seen some people who were actually unhappy with the scoring of this fight. Let's have a look at the scores. 116, 112, 115, 113 twice in favor of Dorticus. I've seen quite a few people who are not happy with those scores who thought the fight was much closer. And I've seen some people who believe that uh, Masternek actually won the fight. Now, personally, I didn't score it. So I'm not going to be debating with anybody about how the fight was scored or who won. I did feel it was close, though. And when the scores came out as... Not like they're extremely wide, but when the scores came out as wide as they are here, I was a little surprised, slightly surprised. Okay, it's particularly the 116, uh, 112, you know, by four rounds. I was like, mm, really? Was it the Dorticus win that emphatically? I don't know. So any of you who want to go and score the fight for yourselves, again, it's available here on the World Boxing Super Series YouTube channel. They stream all their fights so far this year in HD. So hats off to them. Fantastic for us to be able to watch live on YouTube. Go and have a watch of it if you haven't seen it already. 
and let me know what you think about the scoring. Let me know what you think about Dorticus's tactics. Why does this guy have absolutely no regard for boxing? <laughs> Why does this guy only want to blast you out and doesn't want to use his natural abilities? Very long arms. What's his reach here? He's got an 80 inch reach. That's a good reach for a guy who's 6'3". It's like Larry Holmes reach. Good reach for a six foot three inch guy. Doesn't use it. Just goes in there swinging bombs. And again, it's great for us to watch. But he could be more effective than he is, in my opinion. So, yeah, let me know what you think about everything I've talked about in this video. And as I said in a previous video, I'd like to see Dorticus face off against his Cuban comrade, Mike Perez. It seems unlikely that it's going to happen anytime soon because of the fact that Perez is only a reserve for the World Boxing Super Series. He's not actually in it at the moment. So unless somebody pulls out, then we're not going to be seeing Uni or Dorticus against Mike Perez anytime soon, unfortunately. But that's a fight I'd really like to see. I just think it's a great matchup of styles. I think there's a high probability that it will be a, a very good fight and a low probability that it will be a hug fest, more likely a slug fest. Yeah, ne both guys are full of pride. Both guys are aggressive. Both guys are tough. Both guys are physically strong. Mike Perez, I think, has the much better stamina of the two. But Dorticus, I think, is the bigger one-punch man. Uh, and even though Mike Perez looks more physically powerful and he's coming down from heavyweight, I think Dorticus is the guy with the heavier hands. I think Mike Perez is more explosive with his shots. I think he's maybe a bit faster with single punches. But Dorticus, as I say, <laughs> a very, uh, very aggressive and knockout-minded individual. That's how he is. More knockout-minded than Perez is. Perez can box. I know Perez has been very aggressive, particularly at cruiserweight, but Perez can box. You go watch some of his early fights. He can get on the back foot, jab, move around, etc. He can do all that. I mean, look when Mike Perez boxed. Carlos Takem, for example, he boxed in that fight. Yeah, and he was boxing very well until he got tired, but that's when he wasn't in as good a shape as he is now. That was up at heavyweight. So, yeah, I'll leave you guys with that. Let me know what you think about Uni Adorticus's performance against Masternek. And, I mean, you can forget about me banging on about him fighting Perez all the time because that's probably not going to happen. But what you can, you can talk about realistically is how you think Dorticus is going to get on against the other cruiserweights in the World Boxing Super Series this year. Can he win it? Can he redeem himself from last year? I think with the tactics that he's using right now, he's making himself very beatable. Because he hasn't learned from the Gassier fight, has he? He's still doing the same thing. So, all anybody has to do is replicate what Gassiev did. Now, it's easier said than done, because not everybody's as good as Gassiev. But the blueprint is there because Dorticus hasn't switched up his game plan. Let me know how you feel, people. It's happening, I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.